Welcome to Make Your Mark podcast, where guests share their experiences, insights, and tactics to help you accelerate your business. So building, scaling, and monetizing your business is made easier. And I will be your host, Kay Suthar. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Make Your Mark podcast. Now, oh my goodness, I have been talking to our guest today behind the scenes. She's an absolute riot. She, her name is Tracy Gunn. She is a seasoned entrepreneur and founder of Get Exitable. I think I said that right. I sounded right, maybe. But it's a company specializing in helping business owners exit their business on their own terms. Now, drawing from her own experience of transforming her unsellable restaurant into an attractive acquisition in just three months, Tracy works with clients who have looked into exiting their business due to a loss of passion, retirement, or the desire to pursue new opportunities. Now, with her guidance, clients developed a tailored exit strategy that not only makes their businesses sellable, but also transferable and highly desirable to potential buyers, which is absolute key. Now, Tracy is on a mission to help 1 million small business owners develop and implement exit strategies by the end of 2028. Oh my goodness, Tracy, I cannot wait to get into the nitty gritty of what this all means and how you've done it. This is awesome. Thanks for coming onto the show. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited. I love talking about this stuff. So I can't wait to jump into it. And what a great intro. Thanks so much. I feel so special. <laughs> you are special, Tracy. Oh, You're yeah. very, very I special. am. <laughs> and so one of the first questions I always love to ask my guests, right, is we've never built a business overnight or in a click of a finger. It doesn't happen, right. even though it may seem like that to a lot of people but that's never the case. And so I would love for you to share a little bit about your story as to how you got to where you are today. What did it look like? Sure. So I actually was a homeschool mom. I had stayed home for 14 years. I have three awesome kids who are now grown and gone, but they all decided to go to school. And I kind of was like, at this crossroads of like, what do I, what am I going to do with myself? And I was like, I know I'll start a business. And that's kind of how I started. Um, And then that business grew my candy store. And then I kind of got bored. And like we do, we get shiny object syndrome. And so then I started a restaurant and then I got kind of bored with that one. And I started another one and then I added another candy store. So by the time I got to this place, where uh, I decided I didn't want to do any of this anymore. I was running four businesses and I was really tired. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, I started the business, the first one, just because I wanted my own little world that I had got to control. And I was really, you know, betting on me, right? I thought I could go work for somebody, but instead I thought I'd be way more successful because I knew I had a great work ethic. I knew no matter what I set my mind to, I could do. And so I just rolled the dice on me, right? But sometimes the business that we think is going to be our vehicle for prosperity and freedom becomes a prison. And that's kind of what happened, right? I kind of just kept building and building, building, not with the end in mind, but just with, you know, more scaling, growing. And that's kind of how I wound up, you know, working from 7 a.m. until like one or two in the morning every day. Uh, and just tired. And I hit that wall of, I don't want to do this anymore. And so then I hired a broker thinking I'll just sell no big deal. Right? Like most people think I'll just hire a broker. He'll find me a buyer. Maybe it won't be worth millions, but it'll be worth something. And then I'll get to move on. I had a brand new grandbaby and I just shifted my priorities. I didn't was just tired. And the broker told me that my businesses were unsellable. Like it was hopeless and just to liquidate. And I was so stunned. Like I still today, I could feel it like, oh, because we build these things thinking they're going to pay us back someday. And what if, right? What if it doesn't pay us back? And so that's where I was like looking down that the barrel of that gun of like, what if all this was for nothing? Oh, like, yeah. and so I decided to fix it. And that's kind of how I got onto this exitable journey, right? 
And really, as I went through that, I wondered, why didn't anybody warn me that this was coming? Like, why didn't anybody, I know business owners, why didn't anybody say, hey, by the way, are you thinking about the end? Are you thinking about what if? Because I was building with none of that in mind. And that, unfortunately, is what most business owners are building, right? They're just building for more. How do we increase? How do we grow? How do we get more customers? How do we you know, monetize better? How do we get more profitable? How do we systematize? How do I get maybe my time back a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. But nobody's really thinking about that end game. No. And so, yeah, that's kind of how we jumped into it. So that's kind of like my backstory of like how I got here. So, and then the punchline of that is, so I fixed some things. I decided, okay, I'll give myself six months. I'll fix the biggest pain business. Mm-hmm. And um, in three months, I found a buyer. Yeah. I'm making a few changes, but I made it from unsellable, not really attractive to becoming attractive all because I learned about shifting my priorities to what would the end product look like and what could that look like? Who my buyer, who could they be? What would they be looking for, right? And geared it towards that. But I think, and this is why I think about like business owners starting out, right? They're like, I'm not even ready for that. Except if you think about and just target what you think the end looks like, it filters all your choices from then on. And so, um, you know, once you've set that, so if I had set up my restaurant with the end in mind that someday I want to not have to be here, right? Right. If I had done that, I would have maybe made some different choices. And so that's kind of like my, you know, shout out to the wilderness of like, you need to prepare for this, even if you're not ready. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. I've got so many questions with what you've already (laughs) said. Right. So first of all, just taking a couple of steps back. Sure. You said your bu- your first business was opening a candy store. Like, where did that idea come from? You know, I was just walking around downtown. I actually had written a whole business plan on a different model that I really loved. I was kind of hacking their model about building this community thrift store idea. Wow. And um, and I thought, you know, it would serve the community, serve people. I just loved the idea. And I built this whole business plan. I was touring properties and I went into this one property and I was like, this would be an amazing candy store. I don't know where it came from. And then just like that, I shifted and decided, you know what? Our downtown needs our downtown needs a candy store. Every downtown needs a candy (laughs) store. And so I started it. And so, yeah, that's kind of how it started. And I had already kind of done the numbers on the other. And frankly, I just jumped in, right? I had made all these plans. I just jumped in. I was like, well, just like homeschooling. When I decided to homeschool, I was not a teacher, but I thought I could do this. And if it doesn't work, it's not that huge. It's not a huge risk. I'm not investing millions of dollars. Like I'll take it month by month. And so that's kind of how I started. I was just figuring it out as I went and implementing and changing because again I mean we I believed in me right that didn't mean I didn't have doubts right but I believe that I could figure it out yeah Um, and so that's kind of how I started and you know candy that's the one business I actually still have is my candy store yeah I still have that part I don't have to be there very much but yeah, that's I love my candy store because it's happy. Now, when you decided to build a candy store, I've got to ask this question. Sure. Did any of your friends or your family say, oh, my goodness, Tracy, you're mad. Why would you want to mm-hmm. do that? Yes, they all did. Because I'll tell you. So my um, ex-husband was in 9-11 and he was really going through a really hard time. So my kids decided to go to school, which was traumatic for me because, like, my purpose was gone. Aww. And then my husband at the time was really going through like a mental health crisis as a result of his um, time in 9-11 and just post-traumatic stuff. And so everything was exploding in my life. And I decided I had gone to some support groups, just trying to get through and make sense of like this disaster zone that was my life. And I thought, you know, I could keep going to these meetings and complaining and being frustrated, or I could actually go do something productive and make some lemonade from all this lemons. And that's kind of, they all thought I was extra crazy, not just to have a candy (laughs) store, not just to start a business, but it was the timing with everything blowing up around me. And that's actually, my candy store is called Life is Sweet, because I figured if I said it enough, 
I would remember that things would not always be hard, that yeah. it would be good. And it is good, right? It, we just go through trials and tribulations and we go through our desert and then we come out on the other side. And sometimes those things are what make the whole, you know, trip around the earth, you know, around the sun worth it. Um, and they make us into better people. And that's kind of what happened for me. But yeah, it came from being in a really bad place where like everything was in transition um, and hard. Yeah. And yes, they thought I was crazy. <laughs> and so I've got, again, I've got to ask. So sure. when you have people closest to you, because I know there's other people that go through this. I've got to ask. Oh, yeah. Point, and they're telling you, you're mad. You're insane. Like this isn't going to work. How did you mentally and emotionally still keep pushing forward and carrying on with your dreams of building this candy store? Yeah, I mean, for me, it just was a matter of, I could, right? I'm pretty practical. I think I think entrepreneurs in general are super optimistic people, right? And pretty driven. And the combination of those things really minimize for us the 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 struggle that we know is going to be there but we we don't focus on how hard it's going to be we focus on how great it's going to be once we get through it right and i think that's something we all have in common otherwise we wouldn't do it right, right? if we didn't want more if we didn't want to prove ourselves if we weren't resilient enough to get through the hard stuff right then we wouldn't continue to be entrepreneurs or owners because the first trial, you just would throw your hands up and quit, right? And you go back to working for somebody where you could have weekends off and not have to worry about those kind of things, mm -hmm. right? And so I just think we're made a certain way. And we then we kind of become purified in the fire of doing it, right? right? And it never ends. So like for me, I had done all those things and I was like, sure, I'll open a restaurant. <laughs> then when I did that one, Sure, I'll open another restaurant that's 6,500 square feet and seats 400. Sure, I can do this, right? We build on that belief in ourselves. So when the broker said it's not worth anything, it was devastating, but only for a few minutes, right? It wasn't forever because we've built over time the resiliency of all the people saying it's not possible. In some ways, it's kind of like, pouring kerosene on the fire of like, yeah, tell me it's not possible and I'll show you that it is, right? It's kind of like, I dare you. When they say no, and it's not going to happen, and this is crazy and you shouldn't do it, it kind of like inspires us to want to do it even more. Right, yes. Right, and not in a bad way, but like as in a, I know, like, because if we didn't really believe in it, we would just say, oh yeah, you're right. And we would move on. But if we know that kernel of truth in us is like real, and we believe them doubting just fuels us even more. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad you said that because I feel the same way, right? Mm. When people doubt me or say you can't do it or they don't believe in me, it gives me a fire up my ass. And I'm like, I'm going to mm -hmm. show you. I'm oh, gonna... yeah. Prove it. <laughs> yeah. The same thing. I mean, when I homeschooled, I didn't know that I would be. I knew I wouldn't be perfect right? Because I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I could figure it out. And nobody cared about my kids more than I did. Yeah. Right. So for me, the combination of that, I was like, I could do this. I Absolutely. totally could do this. Right. And the same for that. So that by doing that, you know, and you don't get a report card with homeschooling. I'm just going to say that out loud. Right. It feels sometimes <laughs> like a fruitless endeavor. Right. Nobody's thanking you. Nobody's like no paycheck, no report right. card for you. But, you know, 20, 30 years later, you see the results, right? I've got three, like I've got a doctor, I have a, one who graduated with a math degree, and I've got a, uh, one who graduated uh, in safety, right? So I've got three college graduates. I didn't do too bad. But sometimes yeah. you have to wait for that report card. And in some ways, selling your business is your ultimate report card. Like, how did you do? Right. Because when you're in it, you're getting paid. Hopefully you're making some money, you have some freedom. Right. All the things you'd hope for. But your final report card is really like nobody really wants to go out of business. Nobody really wants to just have a retirement sale. Most of us want that ultimate like I did that. Yeah. I built that. I endured that. I exited that. 
and I sold and I got paid for all that work, right? That's what I wanted. I mean, and I think, you know, the being able to get it is possible, just has to be planned and executed to make it happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. I love it, Tracy. Now, talking about building a business to exit, mm-hmm. right? Now, mm-hmm. people are probably going to be thinking, well, when you build a business, you're not thinking about exiting it, right? You're mm-hmm. thinking about building and scaling it. Like, why would you want to even think about that in the beginning? Right. Exactly. I mean, that's true. Um, but here's the thing. Like, I, I use this analogy a lot when we when we teach is that, like, if you are going, like, let's say you were just going to get in your car and you're going to drive west from, like, New York <clears throat> and you were heading for California, mm-hmm. you don't have a specific destination in mind. You could wind up in Florida, you could wind up in Chicago, you could wind up in Alaska. Like West is West. Like it could be, but when you have a target that you're aiming for, right? It gives you a filter by which everything is weighed against, right? And then you can change the filter, right? So let's just say someday I'd like to build this business and I want it to pay me back. And eventually I'll probably want to sell. Just knowing that shifts a little bit how you build it. Because if you're building knowing that you want to be able to sell it, that means you want to be able to take it, hand it to somebody and have it not fall apart, right? But even a step before that is you want to own it and not be a slave to it, right? That's a target, right? So along the way, if you want to sell someday, there are some things that you should be thinking about as you start, but as you grow, like as you bring in new people, it's about having systems in place, right? Right. It's about not being, not creating your own prison, right? But actually creating a business that gives you the freedom you hoped for when you started it. But if you don't work towards that, right? If it doesn't become some business owners, they start and they just want to, to, to be and prove it works. And then when they get in that place and they feel a little bit comfortable, now they think, oh, well, maybe we want to grow or maybe I want more time, right? Maybe I want to make more work less, right? But that becomes their next target. Mm -hmm. So they've like gotten through the first stage, right? Of starting it. Is it proof? Is it going to work? And figuring out how to make it work. Now, once they make it work, they either want to do more in scale or they want to kind of continue it, but have more time. Right. And freedom. Right. So, but we're always setting targets. It's just really about thinking about where do you want to be in the long run? Right. And most of us, we have children. We decide, okay, we probably don't want those children to live with us forever. (laughs) Right. Right. So we have a long term goal, is which gets us through the hard times of teaching them how to become responsible, independent people. Right. Mm-hmm. It's no different in your business, right? If eventually you don't want to have to run it all the time, you have to, you're setting up that goal, whether it's on purpose or not, inevitably you're trying to work yourself out of it, right? Instead of um, making it harder for yourself, right? We hire people or we buy software to set us free from some of the things we don't want to have to do, right? Right. It's the same thing. But somehow I 100% believe that if you have the end in mind, which is I want to sell someday, that will filter a lot of the choices, excuse me, that will filter a lot of the choices that you make along the way, right? Now, if I had been thinking, oh, I want to be able to, you know, for me, the, the my exit point was I was tired. I had a new grandbaby and I was stuck in the businesses, not a hundred percent because I couldn't have run all four. If any of them were not running independent, like the candy store, that's my easiest one. I had gotten to a place where it was just running itself. I wasn't needed anymore. So I wanted something new. That's why I started my first restaurant. And then once I did that, I saw this opportunity and then I did the next thing, right? Because it was kind of the systems were in place. Yeah. Um, And then I moved to the next one, right? But the goal was to set me up for freedom always. It was always to work myself out of it. But not everybody starts their businesses with that in mind. Right, exactly. And so I guess 
my next question is what kind of things should we be looking out for right if if we we don't know what the future is going to um be like right we don't know what's going to be around the corner where where we're going to be at and things change our our minds change all the time and so as we're building this business and we're not thinking about the exit strategy but you want to prepare for it just in case because you never know what kind of things do we need to be thinking about right now to prepare for that if it ever happens so i usually have a couple things that i share so number one is just set a a goal, even if it's just for this year. How how many of us, me included, don't set our goal for the year? More is not a goal, yeah. right? How many of us set the budget for the year? We all plan to, most don't, right? How many of us uh, set a target for the year or two years or three years and actually set quarterly goals? Again, what happens is we get busy, yes, right? And we're in it and we're running it and often it's running us. And so the intention is there, right? Because if you don't know what you're aiming for, how do you know if you hit it? So that's mm-hmm. number one. Like, even if it's not, like, even if it's just a 30,000 foot view of, I think someday I'd like to sell or give it to my children or have it be, or continue owning it, but not have to be there. Even setting yeah. that filters what we do. Number two is most business owners, entrepreneurs have no idea what their business is even worth, which is crazy. Like if you think about it, most of us know what our houses are worth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our large investment. Did you know that 80% of our net worth as owners is in our businesses? 80 okay. Wow. So most of our net worth, because, right, think about it, we're like working towards building this thing. And we are so tied up in that uh, worth wise, that what if it just shuts down, we lose all that net worth, right? There's value there. It's just maybe not attractive to a buyer yet, right? That's fine. So wouldn't it be helpful to know how to value your business, yeah, what it's worth. So that way, as you're growing, you're aware of not only are you growing like more customers or expanding or expanding your product lines, but what if you knew what created the value and you could focus on those things, right? And so I highly encourage, and we actually have free tools to do this on um, our website. So if you wanted to do that, it's getexable.com. Um, but anyway, I think having a plan for like what you think you might want in the future. Like I started my businesses with the idea that someday they would pay me back in some way, whether it was continually paying me while I owned it or selling for profit. Those were kind of my overarching goals, right? I wasn't just doing it to have a place to be every day. I wanted, right, it to pay me back like children. I invested 18 years in them. Eventually you want them to pay you back and take care of you when you're old and give you grandbabies. Those are good too, (laughs) right? And so, but like same for our businesses, right? Most of us, like when I started my candy store, I knew I didn't want to be the lady behind the counter forever. For some people, that's what they want to be. And that's fine. But no, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. I knew I didn't want that. So I built in a way that I wouldn't have to be that person. That I would, as quickly as I could, put staff in that position and created systems and processes to make sure they did it the way that I wanted them to. So it would give me the freedom that I was looking for and the fine and the profit, right? I set that up from the get-go. Now, that's kind of my exit strategy, right? It just, I didn't have that name on it, right? But if it was dependent on Tracy behind the counter, the likelihood of selling that, because Tracy's not for sale, Mm. is small. And so, and there is no wrong answer. This is the other thing. People like, if you want to liquidate, that's fine, right? If you want to be a solopreneur and know that you're probably never going to sell because you can't sell yourself, it that's okay. But know that. And if you want something different, now's the time to make the adjustments to get to what you want. And it just happens naturally. Once you've identified what it is you want, it naturally 
starts to adjust how you're looking at things. Every once in a while, now that I don't have the restaurants anymore, people will come to me like, oh, we have this place. Do you want to take it over? You want to do it? Mm-hmm. And every, because I am typical serial entrepreneur, I'm like, ooh, an opportunity. <laughs> and then I look at it and then I remember, what do I really want? Right. I don't want to be a slave anywhere. I do not want to be tied to a location. I do not want to do things for low profit. Yeah. Right. I don't want to do those things anymore, right? And so a restaurant is one of those very, it's one of the hardest things you can do, right? Just there's so many working parts and you're so dependent on staff and staff is hard to find. Yes. Um, and mm-hmm. right, so it cures me pretty quickly because then I remind myself, well, what do I really want? What do I really want? And that removes it. So although it's fun for a minute, to like look at the opportunity. Oh, I could do this. I could do that. That's kind of fun for a minute. Before I pull the trigger, I always I'm like, nope, that is not what I would be doing, right? Because I've set that target. Um, so knowing what your business is worth and what makes it valuable is part, and part is knowing what you actually want. Because for everybody, that's different. Absolutely. But the biggest thing that I took away from what you just said, Tracy was that because you know what you want, you're able to say no. Even if there are opportunities, yes. right, it doesn't fit with where you want to go. It's going to take you into a different direction if you do. And so it's okay to have this opportunity presented, but still say no. Correct. And that gives me the filter for saying no, right? Because yeah. so much of what we, so much of our daily existence and work is often it's just as much what we say no to as what we say yes to and sometimes especially for serial entrepreneurs is when the opportunity presents we get so enamored with the opportunity of what could be right that eternal uncrushable optimism that we fail to balance that with what do I actually want and I would even suggest that most entrepreneurs don't really know exactly what they want and it changes right the other thing is is that we talk about like as a small business owner um like what would happen if something happened to me yeah so if I died well let's just say it's not terminal but like what if I had a car accident I was in a coma for four months what would happen to my business this is not just end game thinking this is survival for emergency thinking. Interesting. Right? Because could your business survive without you for a month? Like, and let's make it happy. Mm. This is to say, I was going on vacation for a month, around the world cruise, whatever, right? Mm. Could I without, and what would happen? What would be the repercussions in my business? Could it survive? Could it maintain? Could it grow without me? Hmm. Right. It survive is good if it's just short term. Right. Right. Because you plan to come back. But what if something happened? You couldn't come back. Like people have health scares all the time. Right. Absolutely. Divorce happens a lot, unfortunately, in you know it's small business. Right. Like these things happen. Is your business will it survive? Will your family, who's dependent on that business, be able to run it? Right. Or not, right? Mm-hmm. Like these are things, these are not just end game thinking, right? It's survival thinking. Right. Wow. So, and those are things that I didn't think about. Yeah. Running four of them. Most, and I'll be honest, most of the people we meet with help didn't think about it either. And it's not because they, they're just busy running their businesses. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think when you're thinking about running or building a business and you're, you're young, yeah, right, you think you've got all the time in the world. Yes, we right? do. And yeah. you don't think about what, you know, you can step out and get knocked down. Yeah. Right? Um, right. And so kind of keeping this in mind keeps you grounded, gets you prepared, and mm-hmm. also make sure that your loved ones are, are okay as well. Well, or your staff, would your staff get paid this week if you didn't do it? Mm -hmm. 
when I had the two restaurants and two candy stores, I had 42 staff. Wow. Like if I didn't do the payroll, there was nobody to do that. Yeah. They wouldn't even know how. Right. So, I mean, those kind of things. Now, those are easy things to fix, right? You just kind of create an SOP and show someone. But like that was we kind of do this little side thing of like in case of emergency, like does anybody have that in case of emergency packet? Like you're going to Hawaii on vacation. You think you'll be back in a week and something happens. Right. right? What happens back home? Because nobody plans, nobody plans an emergency. No. Happens, yeah. Right. Yeah, and so it's just those same kind of things, but like that's also end game. So they both are more preparation for the unexpected yeah. or the expected, right? But it's preparation so the business can be just like a child that's growing up an independent functioning thing. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, Tracy, I know at this point we were thinking, oh my goodness. Okay. I need to speak with Tracy. I need to <laughs> my business, right? So yeah. where can I go to connect with you and to learn more about you? Oh, well, we would love that. Um, so getexitable.com is the easiest place because we have some free training on there. Like you can do Ooh. a free valuation of your business, like understand and explain. Not only does it do, it's like a calculator, but it walks you through what the terminology is. So you don't feel like, what does that mean? Right. And it helps you put the numbers in and tweak things. So I love that. We have a, a test that will tell you how sellable you are right now. So it's just a two minute quiz, right? Gives you those ideas. But we also do some free classes. Like we do a free two hour class that kind of tells you what it's like to sell. Why did you know that only one in 10 businesses actually sell? Like it's a really abysmal number. Wow. Only by learning that I was not sellable did I learn like that most businesses aren't sellable. And it's for a lot of reasons, but there's not enough buyers out there. But also most businesses are not transferable because we're in them. We're working in them, right? And so those kind of things. So we do a class teaching people how to go from being completely in prison a little bit, right? To set themselves free, to get themselves out and how to do that. And that's what we do on our free class that we do. We usually do it every week or two. So there, you can sign up for that there too. So, but I would like, again, shoot me an email. I'm on all the socials, but like, I love talking about this Mm -hmm. because I think small business owners are like the superheroes of our economy. Like they bring value to their community. They created something from nothing. Mm -hmm. They are hardworking and they deserve to get the exit they want. And it just takes a little design and implementation, but they can get there. So if a broker ever says it's not worth it, don't listen to them. (laughs) Awesome. Oh my goodness, guys. Listen, you need to speak to Tracy. Reach out to her. Have a look at those downloadables, those freebies. So generous of you, Tracy. Thank you so much. Like, go and connect with us. See um, if you can find out what the gaps are, how to actually, you know, um, get over them and see if Tracy can help you. In fact, I know she can help you. So go and connect with her right now. Tracy, thank you so much for coming on to the show. So many golden nuggets in such a short amount of time. I love it. I thank you so much. I hope everybody just takes a little golden nugget from there and does something and use my free stuff. But if not, just do something because you, you are important to our economy and our community and to your family. And it's important to do these things to protect them and yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love it. Once again, thank thank you. you. Tracy. Thanks so much. It was a pleasure. Anytime. Thanks for listening to Make Your Mark podcast at www.makeyourmarkpodcast.com. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get this and every other episode that comes out. We have lots of great stuff coming, so make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss it. And thank you in advance for all the reviews and comments. I appreciate it so much and I look forward to serving you in next week's episode.